Welcome back to 5 Days a Week, everyone. This is your Blue Devil News, and I'm Connor. And I'm Winter. Seniors, we have some important information to so listen up. Graduation is May 29th at Lipscomb University. Senior fee of $75 is due March 5th. This includes your cap, gown, diploma, and cover, and other costs with graduation. Go to LHS website to pay. Senior night date has just been announced and will be April 16th, so everyone do what you are supposed to so we don't get canceled because of the bid. The Tennessee Promise extended the fast food deadline to March 1st and they are offering webinars for the eight hours of required community service due to COVID. LHS Fast Food Frenzy has been rescheduled for today from 12 to 4 in the library. Signups are required and families can reserve a time at Genius.com. Prom is May 7th here on the soccer field and it'll be a night to remember. Tickets are $40 if purchased before March 26th and $50 after that. Tickets will not be sold after April 23rd. You must purchase them at the bank or online. Your books are still on sale for $90. Free orders have ended, so we are currently selling remaining stock and do not anticipate on having extras. We sold out last year and expect to do so this year. Orders can be placed using the school, cash, or on yearbookforever.com. We will be right back after this break from our BDN Gossip Girls. I wonder what they're going to gossip about today, Winner. Hi, I'm Neely Hedo. And I'm Lauren G. And we are the Gossip Girls. We will be bringing you a new segment of updates on the latest and trendiest celebrity gossip. Recently, actress Lucy Hale, who is well known for her part in Pretty Little Liars, was spotted on a lunch date with Skeet Ulrich, who plays in the hit TV show Riverdale. I don't know about you, but that was not a couple I was expecting. However, on to some sad news. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West have filed for divorce. Kim was recently interviewed about the real reason why the couple split. An insider explained, Kim tried to continue to stay together for their children, but it was just time to move on. She wanted to make it clear that there were no affairs or drama. The two just grew apart. There's a lot more news where that came from, and we will be back every single week to give you the latest scoop. We might even ask you for your opinions on the subjects. XOXO, XOXO Gossip Girls! Cumberland Dual Enrollment Interest Meeting will be on March 18th at 6 p.m. There will be a student council meeting in the library tomorrow after school. GSA will meet on Tuesday, March 2nd, after school in Ms. Robertson's room at B213. Any culinary arts students wishing to participate in the Pro Star competition, please see Ms. Morgan at A801, the cafe, before the end of the week. March 3rd, 2021, culinary students will compete in our annual pasta competition here at Lebanon High School against Wilson Central in Green Hill High School. This event is open for teachers, students, and parents to come and cheer on your favorite chefs. Cooking starts at 530. Tennessee Boys and Girls State is among the most respected and selective ed educational programs of government instruction. This year, it, we will be virtual with two different dates. The date for girls will be June 1st to June 4th, and for boys, it will be May 25th to May 29th. Please come by guidance and pick up the form for Ms. Reed to return it by the end of the day. March 3rd, this year, senior boys are welcome due to COVID cancellations last year. This weather has been all over the place. Here's Rex and Stone with their first weather broadcast. Hey everybody, I'm Rex. And I'm Stone. And this is our first Blue Devil weather report, so thanks for tuning in. And we're going to give you the weather for the rest of the week. Today's today, February 25th, a little overcast with a few clouds early, otherwise mostly sunny, with a high of 57 and a low of 39. Winds up to 5 to 10 miles an hour. Thanks, man. Tomorrow we're looking at occasional rain showers throughout the day with more winds between the 5 to 10 mile per hour range, with a chance of rain of 50% throughout the day and a high of 55 degrees and a low of 51 degrees Fahrenheit. Saturday, February 27th. R rain early, <laughs> remaining clouds early in the sun. Early clouds with. Saturday, February 27th. Rain early, then remaining clouds and showers in the afternoon with a high of 59 and a low of 55. Winds up to 5 to 10 miles an hour. Lastly, Sunday, we're going to be looking at even more rain with potential heavy rainfall. With southwest winds going to 5 to 10 miles an hour and an 80% chance of rain all day, we're looking at probably over an inch of rain with a high of 61 and a low of 45. And that's all the weather we have today. Thanks, everybody. Back to you guys. You must have a parking pass to park on campus. If you don't have one, there will be application outside of the bank. You must have purchased a pass during lunch. If you have lost your pass, replacement passes are $5 and are available at the bank during lunch. Please make sure your hang tag is properly displayed and visible. Be sure you are in the correct spot 
that coordinates with your hand tag. Due to COVID restrictions, the hardworking yearbook staff is having a hard time collecting content. Please send any pictures from this school year to LHS at souvenir at gmail.com or upload to yearbookforever.com or email BDN and we will make sure the staff gets it. The ACT is quickly approaching and will take place right after spring break on Tuesday, March 16th. Here are some test taking ACT tips. Hello and welcome to Here Tutoring. In this video, we're going to cover the top 10 tips, tricks, and strategies to use to raise your ACT score. So, without further ado, here they are. Tip number one, don't take the ACT like it's a normal test. Usually, for a normal test, you have plenty of time to finish, so you start from the beginning and work slowly and carefully to the end. Also, especially for math, you usually have to show all the steps and show the teacher you actually know how to go through the process of answering the questions the right way. But you shouldn't take the ACT this way. First of all, because you won't have plenty of time to work slowly and carefully through all of the questions, especially for the reading and science tests. And second of all, because you don't need to show that you know how to do the questions in the right way. All you need to do is pick the right answer. This is especially relevant for the math test. You not only don't need to show your work for the ACT math test, but you also don't need to do the questions the right way. There are tricks to finding the right answer, even if you have no idea how to do the question the right way. Tip number two, bring and know how to use a digital watch. If you're at all serious about getting the highest score possible on the ACT, bringing a digital watch really isn't an option. Bringing a digital watch will help you manage time and pace yourself through each test so you can make the most of every valuable minute that you have. Now, there will probably be a clock in the room that you take the ACT in, but since it probably won't be a digital clock, it'll be harder to keep track of time precisely using this clock. And also, this clock might not be in a convenient location for you to check it regularly and easily. Bringing and using a digital watch yourself helps you make sure you're in control of time management for the ACT, which is key to getting the highest score possible on the test. I wouldn't worry about the watch beeping since it's quick and quiet enough to not be an issue. Just start the stopwatch when the practice has begun and then keep track of time according to your game plan, which is our next strategy. Tip number three, have a game plan for managing time. The ACT is a timed test and time is especially an issue for the reading and science tests, which are designed to be difficult to finish for almost every student. If you don't go into each test with a game plan for managing time, there's a really good chance that you'll run out of time for the test. For the English test, time won't really be an issue, but just know that you have about 9 minutes for each passage. For the math test, you have 60 minutes for 60 questions, but the questions get harder at the end, so you want to make sure that you work faster at the beginning so you have more time for the questions that are harder at the end. For the reading test, you have about 8 minutes 45 seconds for each passage, and you want to read each passage in about 3 minutes, plus or minus 30 seconds. For the science test, give yourself about 5 minutes for each of the non-conflicting viewpoints passage, a little less for the data representation passages, and a little more for the conflicting viewpoints passage. When you go into each of the different sections of the ACT, you should know what question or passage you should be on at a certain time, and stick to this game plan to avoid missing any of the easy questions you might not get to otherwise. Tip number four. Use authentic ACT practice tests to prepare. Did you know that most of the ACT practice tests out there are actually not really authentic ACT practice tests, but rather imitation practice tests that companies other than the ACT have created themselves? Now, some of them might be pretty good, but none of them really compares to using actual retired ACT practice tests, which are the only practice tests that will truly give you an accurate prediction of what ACT score you might get on the actual test. Currently, there are 11 real authentic ACT practice tests out there. Four of them are free and they can be found in the preparing for the ACT booklets which you can find links to below. Five of them are in the real ACT prep guide also known as the red book and two of them can be found from the ACT online website which you can register for. The best way to prepare for what you will actually see on the ACT is to use these real ACT practice tests and then go to the other practice tests only after you've used up all of these real ones. 
Tip number five, take advantage of the special ACT test dates. Did you know that out of the six days that the ACT is administered each year, three of them are special? Well, how are they special? Well, for the December, April, and June ACT test dates, you can order something called the Test Information Release Form, which will allow you to receive a copy of your answers and test booklet so you can know what you missed and how to improve for next time. This resource is great for finding out what you need to work on for the next time that you take the ACT. Also, since you can take the ACT as many times as you want without penalty, it's a great idea to start taking the ACT early and use these test information release forms to get better and better each time you take the ACT. The slight extra cost for this form is well worth the knowledge you'll gain from it that'll help you improve your score for next time. Tip number six, develop your reading speed and comprehension by reading a lot of college level nonfiction articles, magazines, and books beforehand. The most important skill that the ACT focuses on is reading speed and ability. This is because being able to read well is probably the most important factor to succeeding in college due to the sheer amount of reading that is required in college. This is why the ACT reading and science tests don't require you to actually come in knowing anything, but rather all of the answers are in the test itself. The only problem, and it's a big one for most students, is that you need to be able to read and comprehend fast enough to be able to finish on time and get a good score. So, before you take the ACT, try to read as much as possible, specifically college-level nonfiction texts, which are the kind of texts that will show up on the passages that you'll see on the ACT. Now we're going to cover a few specific strategies for each section of the ACT. Tip number seven. For the English test, always keep in mind, less is usually better. This principle probably shows up more regularly than any other principle for the ACT English test. And if you simply keep this in mind throughout the entire test, you'll get a good number of questions correct. Generally speaking, the shortest or the shorter answer choices are more likely to be correct than longer answer choices because one major skill the ACT focuses on for the ACT English test is being able to write concisely. So if you see choices that add unnecessary words to a sentence, even if these choices make sense, they are probably wrong. If a choice is short and it makes sense in the sentence, then there's a really good chance that it's simply the correct choice. Tip number eight. For the math test, be ready to use the answer choices and try random numbers. Unlike in math class, for the ACT math test, you don't need to show your work or prove that you actually know how to do the problems the right way. All you need to do is pick the right answer through whatever means necessary. And sometimes the best way to do this, and in fact, the way that the ACT wants you to do this, is to cheat by either using the answer choices or by putting random easy numbers into the question. The ACT is testing your problem solving and critical thinking abilities also, not just your math abilities. For some questions, the right way to do the question will simply take too long, and so the question is designed to see if you can figure out the shortcut to the question. So don't feel bad about doing problems for the math test the wrong way. The writers of the ACT are oftentimes seeing if you can figure out these tricks to some of the problems. Tip number nine. For the reading test, practice reading each passage in about three minutes, plus or minus 30 seconds. You don't have the luxury of reading each passage slowly and carefully and then trying to find the answers to each question slowly and carefully. You need a game plan to finish the test within the time limit. And the best way to do this is to make sure you spend only a certain amount of time reading each passage and then using the key pieces of information you gained through this initial reading to answer the questions efficiently. So know how fast you need to read each passage and know what you want to be looking for as you read through each passage. Don't try to remember every little detail, but rather only the most important details and where to look if you need to find out more specific information. And finally, tip number 10. For the science test, use your fingers to keep track of information. For a lot of the questions that involve graphs, charts, and experiments, you're going to need to constantly go back and forth between the question and the information from the passage. If you just use your eyes, you're probably going to waste a good amount of time trying to find the place you're looking for. Instead, keep your fingers by the relevant question and information from the passage so that when you need to look back and forth, your finger will already be at the place you need to look at. Your finger is a physical tool that will help your eyes be more efficient for the ACT science test, so you can make the most of every minute you have. It would also be a good idea to use your finger for every section of the ACT in some way, but your finger is especially helpful for the reading and science tests, which are extremely limited in time. Using your finger helps you work more quickly and efficiently for these tests. So. These are the top 10 tips for getting a higher score on the ACT. 
Hopefully you found them helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe to support and stay updated with our videos. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time. The softball team is having a grab-and-go pancake breakfast on March 13th from 8 to 10 at Emmanuel Baptist Church. Tickets are $5 and you can buy your tickets now from any softball player or email Coach Atwood. With our basketball teams competing at the district tournaments, it's been an exciting week. Let's see how our teams did in last night's games. Hello Blue Devils, I'm Lyndon. And I'm Zach, and we're here for Blue Devil Sports News. Tiger Woods was in a single car crash and his whole right leg basically shattered. He recently had surgery and is now recovering in an L.A. hospital. Take a look at this clip from ESPN. Breaking news coming out of the state of California just after 7, 12 a.m. Pacific, 10, 12 Eastern time. Tiger Woods, 15-time major championship golfer, was involved in a serious car accident, a one-car accident. And according to the L.A. County Sheriff's Department, it was a rollover accident in which Tiger Woods they had to use the jaws of life to extract him from the car. Here's what we know right now. His agent, Mark Steinberg, just put out a statement moments ago saying that Tiger confirming that he was in a single car accident this morning in California where he suffered multiple leg injuries. He is currently in surgery, and we thank you for privacy and support. That again coming from his agent, Mark Steinberg, who released a statement as you take a look now at the crash footage there from California. Now, it happened in the Ranchos Palos Verdes neighborhood. To give you an idea of where that is at in California, it's about 31 miles south of Los Angeles, about 14 miles west of Long Beach. Tiger most recently was in the L.A. area at Riviera for the Genesis Open, of which he is the host of the tournament. This coming from the L.A. County Sheriff's a statement confirming what had happened with Tiger Woods on February 23rd, 2001 at approximately 7.12 a.m., L.A. County Sheriff's Department responded to a single car rollover traffic collision on the border of Rolling Hills Estates and Ranchos Palos Verdes. The vehicle was traveling northbound on Hawthorne Boulevard and Black Horse Road, where it crashed. The vehicle sustained major damage. The driver, a sole occupant, was identified as PGA golfer Eldrick Tiger Woods. Mr. Woods was extracted from the rack with the jaws of life by the Los Angeles County firefighters and paramedics and then transported to a local hospital by ambulance for his injuries. The traffic investigation is still being conducted by investigators from LASD Lomita Station. In other news, the Nashville Predators are struggling, starting the season off 8-10 and, and recently beat the 5-13 and Detroit Red Wings by a score of 2-0. March Madness is scheduled to begin on March 18th with Gonzaga, Baylor, Michigan, and Ohio State being the likely number one seeds of the tournament. So get those brackets filled out once it gets finalized. College baseball is officially underway, and the SEC is off to a great start, having nine teams in the top 25. Ole Miss, Arkansas, and Vanderbilt are the top three teams in the nation. The girls' basketball team won the district championship over Beach last night, 45-38, to and even though the boys fell short to station camp, both teams will play in the region tournament. The boys play at Clarksville, and the girls play Henry County at home. Also, big congrats to Coach Barrett and Coach McDowell on being named Coaches of the Year. Well, that's all we have for today. Back to you guys. I'm Connor. And I'm Winter. And this has been news to you from the white and blue.